Okay, section 7.1 is on page 342 talks about mathematical induction. Let me get that out of the way. I need to review with you a bit about series. If I take the series n equal 1, n equal 1 to 5 of a sub n, that would be a sub 1 plus a sub 2. Let's go 3. Plus a sub 3, a sub 4. Okay, just kidding. That's it. We call this as sub 3. If I want to find s sub 4, that is the series n equal 1 to 4 of a sub n. Wouldn't that be a sub 1 plus a sub 3 plus a sub I don't know how to count. 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4. Wouldn't you say this is s sub 3 plus a sub 4? And we know how to find a sub 4. You replace n by 4. What if I wanted to find s sub 5? Isn't that the series n equal 1 to 5 of a sub n? Isn't that a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4 plus a sub 5? But wouldn't you say this is actually all of those? So wouldn't you say take s sub 4 and just add the fifth term to it? So if this trend continues, do you agree that s sub 6 is s sub 5 plus the fifth term, sixth term? Meaning, I could say this is a sub 1 plus a sub 2 plus a sub 3 plus a sub 4, a 5, right? Plus the sixth term. And that is the series n equal 1 to 6. So in general, if I want to find s sub k plus 1, wouldn't you say that is the sum of the first k terms? You know, if you want to find s sub 4, take s sub 3, 1 before, and add the fourth term. If you want to take s sub 5, take the first sum of the first and add the fifth term. If you want to find s sub 6, take the sum of the first five and add the sixth term, s sub k plus one will be s sub k plus a sub k plus one. Wouldn't that be the golden trick in doing those? That will always work? Yeah, that always works. And here's the principle of mathematical induction. This is what it says. It says, suppose that the following two conditions are satisfied with regard to a statement about natural numbers, in case you've forgotten, natural numbers are those numbers. They're the counting numbers. Two conditions. Condition one. The statement is true for the natural number one. So whatever you have, you have k, you have n, you let n equal one or k equal one, whatever you want. You get a true statement. That's condition one. Condition two. If the statement is true for k, so you assume that. You assume or suppose that the statement is true because that's the f part. Then you have to show this. That the statement, statement means what? An equal. The statement is true for the natural number k plus 1. So you assume it's true for k and show, so two things to show. You need to show for one, it's true, and k plus one is true, assuming k is correct. And here's a natural number. Use the mathematical, this is on page 344, use the mathematical induction, use the, mathem the principle of mathematical induction to show that the given statement is true for all natural numbers n. And if you can't find this in your book, it's already in files, all of the following sections, 7, 1, 8, 1, 9, 1, and 10, 1. So, 
I'm looking at the statement and this is what it says. This is adding. This is the sum of the first n terms. That's a sub 1. That's a sub 2. That's a sub 3. And that is a sub n. So first thing we have to do, we have to check for n equal 1 and see what happens. For n equal 1, I would say either I take the first term or I plug n equal 1 in there because I want a sub 1. Again, here, a sub n is right there. That's always the case. So either plug 1 in or a sub 1 is 1. The right side, plug 1 in and show this. Don't just write 1 equal 1. It works. Very good. Now what? Now comes the second part. The second part, we make an assumption, 2. So I'm going to number those 1 and 2, corresponding to condition 1, condition 2. 2. Assume, suppose, let, assume that statement is true for K. Actually, you don't need that. Suppose the statement Yeah, you can say that. The statement is true for k. Meaning what? Wherever you see an n, plug in a k. 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus plus 4k minus 1 equals k into 2k minus 1. That's my assumption. Now, what's your goal? Your goal is to say for k plus 1. We have, for k plus 1, you have 1 plus 5 plus 9 plus 4k minus 1 plus, how do you find the k plus 1 term? Plug in k plus 1 right there. That's how you find any term. 4 into k plus 1 minus 3 equal and k plus 1 right there. Now, isn't this my assumption? Isn't that a sub k and this is the next term? So this is kind of the metaphor that I've been talking about. S sub k plus 1 plus S sub k plus a sub k plus 1. That's the part I was showing you. So it's exactly the first k terms plus the next term. Any term you want to find, this is the general, this, uh, this is the general term we'll find any term for you. So this is my, by assumption, that is k into 2k minus 1 plus 4k plus 4 minus 3. That should equal, you're allowed to make one simplification on the right, nothing else. Isn't that 2k plus 2 minus 1 is plus 1? That's all you're allowed to do. The right side you can't touch. The left side, your goal is to make this equal to this. So this is 2k squared minus k plus 4k plus 1. That is 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. The right side doesn't seem to be working. Oh, I plugged it in wrong. My mistake. So the right side, we're going to replace those n. We're going to replace those n's by k plus 1. That would be a k plus 1 times, right here, k plus 1 times 2 into k plus 1 minus 1. So here you're allowed to simplify once. That's 2k plus 2 minus 1 is 1. And here, if you factor this, and there it is. Once you get it to match, you're done. And then what? Therefore, you restate the original statement. 
1 plus 5 plus 9 plus plus 4n minus 3 equals n into 2n minus 1. That's mathematical induction. Okay, here's another one. Let's do the same thing. So here we go. This is an equation. Uh, this is a statement. And what do we say? We say 1. Let n equal 1. See if that's true. Now, probably I could do that here. Let n equal 1. No, you know what? It should be in order. There we go. We have plenty of space. n equal 1. Either you take the 3, which is a sub 1, or plug 1 in there, you get a 3. But you must show that part, even though it's not much. It checks. What's your second step? The second step is to make the assumption. Suppose, let, assume. Either way, suppose... the statement is true for k that is meaning what 3 plus 5 plus 7 plus 2k plus 1 equal k into k plus 2 that's my assumption then we're gonna say 4k plus 1 we still have 3 plus 5, this first k terms, plus one more. How do you find the next term? You replace k by k plus 1. And that's going to equal, replace k plus 1 in there. And that's what you have to show. And remember, you are only allowed one step for simplifying the right, nothing else. Now what? The left side, I made an assumption. This assumption, that is k into k plus 2. Plus, if I distribute this in, 2k plus 2 plus 1. So the left side is going to be k squared plus 2k plus 2. Okay, forgive me. Plus 2k plus 3. And wouldn't that be k plus 3? Uh, okay, something didn't add up right. Oh, oh, oh I'm, I rushed. If I erase, I'm going to see that. Here we go. Let's do this again. This is k squared plus 2 2k plus 2k plus 3. So this is k squared plus 4k plus 3. That is k plus 3 into k plus 1, which is literally what's over there. You could say QED, but all what you have to do is say therefore and restate the original statement. And that's an official proof in math. Congratulations. It turns out to be the hardest and the easiest math test for students. The hardest because this is the first time you see this in algebra and you don't like that. The easiest because once you see the other proofs, you'll know this is the most straightforward out of them. And I want to do, I think, a couple more. Yeah, two more. Okay, number eight is next. So again, I would make the same assumption. I look at this, say, all right, well, step number one, I will figure out for n equal one. I'll get a one, or here, three to the zero is one, equal one half into three to the one minus one, 1 equal 1 half of 2, and 1 equal 1, it checks. If the first step doesn't work, you're done. Then what? Then we're going to assume, suppose, or let. 
one of those three statements. Let, or you know what, I've been using assume or suppose, suppose the statement is true for K. That is, this is my assumption, 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus 3 to the k minus 1 equal 1 half into 3 to the k minus 1. That's my assumption. Now, for k plus 1, I'm going to get 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus 3 to the k minus 1 plus another term. The next term in this case is going to be 3. If I replace this by k plus 1, that will be k. If I put a k plus 1 in there, that will be 3 to the k plus 1 minus 1. The right side, there's nothing to simplify. You leave it as is. The right side, I made an assumption. This is always going to be the case. I'm going to replace my assumption by 1 half 3 to the k minus 1 and add one term. And now, algebraically, I need to show that, show that equals this. If I distribute the 1 half and 1 half 3 to the k minus 1 half plus 3 to the k. Now, algebraically, 3 to the k is common in both of those. If I take 3 to the k out, I'm looking at 1 half plus a 1 minus 1 half. That would be 3k. Isn't that 3 halves? And if you really think about this, this is 3, if you multiply those, a to the k times a to the 1 is a to the k plus 1. So you're going to add the powers, and all what you need to do is factor a 1 half out of it. So a bit more than the traditional algebra, but exponentials. And what's the conclusion? There for 1 plus 3 plus 3 squared plus 3 to the to the n minus 1, the original, equal 1 half into 3 to the n minus 1. You're concluding that this assign this statement is true. And I wanted to do one more. I wanted to touch on all of these cases that you come across. Last problem. Again, we would say let n equal 1, 1 over 1 times 3, or here you could put a 1, it doesn't matter, that's going to equal a 1 in there, 1 over 2 plus 1, 1 third equal 1 third, it checks. Assume, suppose, suppose the statement is true for k, that is, so, as you see it, just put a k in there. 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus 1 over 2k minus 1 into 2k plus 1 equals k over twice k plus 1. For k plus 1, it's identically what I see. That's S sub N because now you're adding those. So literally what I see. Plus the next term. The next term is going to be 1 over. And let's see how this works. 1 over twice. If I put a K plus 1 in there. Times. 2 into k plus 1 plus 1, and that's going to equal, put a k plus 1 in there. The right side, you're allowed a one-step reduction, or 2 plus 1 is 3. You're allowed a one-step simplification or reduction, however you want to see it. This is my assumption. It's right there. That is k over 2k plus 1. I'm adding to it this mess. What is that?
that is actually 1 over 2k plus 2 minus 1 is plus 1. That doesn't look like a k. Times 2k plus 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, why are my k's looking this way? And here I notice I could factor 1 over 2k plus 1 out. I'll have a k plus 1 over 2k plus 3. I'll get a common denominator. That will be 2k squared plus 3k plus 1. That's factors. into 2k plus 1 into k plus 1. Is that right? 2k plus 1 into k plus 1. That's right. So this will cancel with that and I would be left with a k plus 1 over 2k plus 3 which is what I want. Therefore 1 over 1 times 3 plus 1 over 3 times 5 plus 1 over 5 times 7 plus 1 over 2k minus 1 times 2k plus 1, not with a k, with an n. Equals n over 2n plus 1. That original statement. And basically you're done. And there's your homework.